A 59-year-old man has been hospitalised with a broken hip after being attacked during an armed hold-up at the Uranga Bowling Club near Coffs Harbour. Three men broke into the club just after 10 last night, threatening and physically assaulting staff before escaping with a sum of cash. It's the second time a Yurunga business has been rocked by an armed hold-up in as many weeks. This time it was the bowling club who fell victim when three armed men broke in shortly after 10pm last night. It is alleged the three offenders smashed their way through a window of the club after jumping the fence of a construction site next door. The three men were armed with a, a rifle, a knife and a jimmy bar. Luckily the staff at that uh, location were able to se secure themselves in a uh, strong room. However, not before a 59-year-old employee was struck with the iron bar, the impact breaking his hip. It's the second time the club has been the target of an armed hold-up and local businesses are growing understandably concerned. I think the business is looking for um, an increase in um, police presence. Um, it's something we've spoken to the area command about and we're hoping that they can reorganise some staffing issues so that it's known that you know, police will be on the beat. Police are now appealing to the public for witnesses. Camilla Campbell, NBN News. A local movement declaring entire communities against coal seam gas exploration is gaining momentum. It started at the Channon near Lismore two months ago and has since spread across the Northern Rivers. These scrolls represent 104 streets in the Lismore Shire that have said yes to closing their strip to coal seam gas. Oh, it's astounding, uh, no doubt about it. The movement started at the Channon in April when the entire village declared itself against coal seam gas. Now it's expanded to 20 other communities with residents surveying residents on their views. And an incredible 96% of people are saying yes, close the roads to coal seam gas. It's, it's really quite astonishing. The Channon, Danoon and Darabi are so far leading the way with over 98% in agreement. They feel that the government and the legal system have failed them. They're having their say. A more official figure will be determined in September's local government elections when residents can answer whether they support CSG exploration and extraction in the Lismore area. We can use that when we're talking to state and federal government. We can also use that figure when we're talking to mining companies. Annalise Rosendahl, NBN News. Spearfishing in Cabbage Tree Bay at Nora Head could be a thing of the past if Wyong Shire Council has its way. It's proposing to ban the popular pastime and local marine conservation groups couldn't be happier. A peaceful haven that's turned into a free-for-all. I mean, we've got young people walking down this ramp behind me with loaded spear guns and sliding into the water and shooting all manner of sea life. Wyong Shire Council unanimously moved a motion last week to put a halt to spearfishing at Cabbage Tree Bay. The matter will now be referred to fisheries and roads and maritime services. Organisations like Ocean and Coastal Care Initiatives are supporting the call. Lack of respect for the environment down here. Um, just because you've got a spear gun doesn't give you the right to kill everything that moves. The popularity of spearfishing has spiked in recent years, with fishing shops selling on average 30 spear guns a week. You get both hands up, like so. You get one hand there, you get your next arm around, and you try and keep the gun as flat as possible. And from here, you literally just pull up. From an outsider's point of view, it does look, you know, a bit full on. It does look cruel, but you know, it's um, it is awesome fun. It is very safe, and it's and, you know, it's a good, it's a good way for the kids to be out there and in in the water. There are already parts of the central coast where the activity is banned within 20 metres of public beaches. When we're out on patrols, staff along the central coast are periodically checking spear fishermen as they do with the rod and line type fishermen. The rules and regulations that we have at the moment in place manage the, the activity quite well. Michael Kane, NBN News. Men in Wyong will soon have another place to tinker with plans for the town's second men's shed given the green light. Once completed, the shed will be the ninth of its kind on the central coast. Most men love a shed, and for Wyong, they're coming thick and fast. Sod turning on the old Wyong Primary School site, exciting for many reasons. A home where they can come to, get their hands dirty, make a bit of noise, but I think more importantly to have some companionship. Once completed, it will be the ninth of its kind on the central coast. Work will commence next week on assembling the structure, which has been designed to blend in with existing rooms on the site. 
A local neighbourhood centre has been involved every step of the way. We started to plan the men's shed probably around 2008, 2009 and then applied through a state government funding opportunity in 2000, late 2009, received the funding in 2010. So we've gone now through the DA process. And with the Allison men's shed already given the green light, coexistence isn't an issue. Certainly can sustain too. Um, this one is in the centre of the town. And, and therefore will attract a different clientele to the one at Allison Homestead where they're probably going to need their own transport to get there. Men's sheds have really come of age and they're really starting to get a lot more publicity which is long overdue. It's a fantastic outreach initiative and is really important for the community. There's now over 450 sheds across the country providing for children's charities, community groups and the needy. The Mayor full of praise and can't wait to get stuck in once up and running. Wheel, you never know what, what you might see me doing, pottering around and fiddling about. But I, I tell you what, I'm no, uh, I'm no carpenter, so uh, don't don't have me building a house. Michael Kane, NBN News. Coming up, the Greek election delivers a good result for the global economy.